Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast News on Rajya Sabha TV. I am Ashwarya Kapoor. Let us begin with the headlines. Election Commission announces dates of assembly polls in four states and one union territory. Voting to be held between 4th April and 16th of May, counting on 19th of May. Three union ministers to represent centre in paying tributes to former Lok Sabha speaker P.S. Sangma in Meghalaya. State announces seven-day mourning. Funeral to be held today. President Pradam Mukherjee to inaugurate National Conference on Women Legislators and Lawmakers in Delhi. Conference organised by Lok Sabha Speaker to, attend, uh, to be attended by around 300 women MPs and MLAs. One Indian nun killed in Aden in Yemen. Gunmen stormed missionaries of charity old age home and killed 16 people. And India files complaint to WTO against US over decision to impose high fee on temporary working visas. US reacts, says its visa program is fully compliant with WTO obligations. The top story, the Election Commission has announced the dates for the elections to the four states and a union territory whose assembly terms end this year. Now, voting will be held in Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry and Kerala between 4th of April and 16th of May. The Election Commission also announced that uh, the model code of conduct will take place immediately. Assembly elections in Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Puducherry will be held between 4th April and 16th of May. The votes will be counted on the 19th of May. The Assam elections will be held in two phases. The first phase will include 65 constituencies. The date of poll for first uh, phase is 4th April, Monday. In Assam, that has 126 assembly seats, elections will be held in two phases on 4th and 11th of April. West Bengal, that has 294 seats, will have elections in six phases on April 4th, 11th, 17th, 21st, 25th, 30th and the 5th of May. Legislative Assembly of West Bengal will be covered under overall six phases. With 140 constituencies, Kerala will have a single phase election on the 16th of May. Tamil Nadu with 234 seats and Puducherry with 30 seats will vote in a single phase poll on the 16th of May. The commission also said the model code of conduct has taken immediate effect. These elections will also have the nota option of voting for none of the above. 824 assembly constituencies are going to poll. The commission is committed for strict enforcement of model code of conduct by concerned governments political parties, star campaigners and candidates. Over 17 crores or 170 million voters will be participating in these elections. The BJP sees a strong presence in Assam, where it has announced pre-poll alliances with the AGP of Praful Kumar Mahent and the Bodo Land People's Front. In West Bengal, Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee of the TMC will seek a return to power. The three-cornered contest could see it pitted against the BJP and an alliance between the left and the Congress. In Tamil Nadu, JJ Lalita, the AIA DMK will face a challenge from the DMK that has joined hands with the Congress and is also said to be in talks with the DMDK led by actor-turned-politician Vijay Kant. In Kerala, the CPIM-led Left Democratic Front or the LDF hopes to oust the Congress-led UDF. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's listen into some of the political reactions coming in on uh, the, re uh, the, the elections that have been announced. As far as the BJP is concerned, we will get more time to mobilize the people and uh, complete the repressions all out in Kerala. We will take up with the election commission regarding the uh, increased number in the voters list. Otherwise, we are prepared. We are so happy because we are very sure of it. 19th May again, our Honorable Chief Minister Amma, on sixth time Chief Minister, she's going to achieve and sit in the same chair again. Then we are very happy in six times. We are very happy in that. And the most important thing is that the whole Kendriyo Bahini is going to be in the same chair.
And on to some other news now. Well, uh, three union ministers will pay last respects to veteran politician P.A. Sangma, the first Lok Sabha speaker from the Northeast in Tura in Meghalaya. Sports Minister Sarbananda Sonowal, Minister of Development for Northeast Region Jitendra Singh and Minister of State for Home Kiran Rijiju will attend the function in Tura today following a directive of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. While Singh and Rijiju will accompany the body from Delhi today, Sonowal will join them in Guwahati en route to Tura. 68-year-old Sangma passed away in Delhi on Friday. The funeral will be held today at Sangma's hometown Tura, West Garo Hills district of Meghalaya. President Pranam Mukherjee led the nation in paying tribute to former Lok Sabha Speaker P.A. Sangma. In a condolence message to Sangma's wife, Suradini Sangma, the President wrote, In his passing away, the nation has lost an eminent public figure and multifaceted personality who made immense contribution for the greater good of our country. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari paid floral tributes to Sangma at his residence in Delhi where he passed away. In his condolence over the demise, the Vice President said, he championed the mainstreaming of the northeastern parts of the country and worked tirelessly for the uplift and improvement of tribal communities. Prime Minister Narendra Modi also paid homage to the deceased leader at his residence. Earlier, tweeting after the news of Sangma's death broke, Modi said, A self-made leader whose contribution towards the development of the northeast is monumental, saddened by his demise. Earlier announcing the news of his death, Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan described him as a man of the masses. Sri P.A. Sangma was elected as the Speaker of Lok Sabha during the 11th Lok Sabha. As Speaker of the Lok Sabha, he conducted the proceedings of the House with great ability and distinction. His parliamentary skill and comprehensive knowledge of parliamentary practices and procedures haste uste sadan kaise chalana ye maine ek prakar se the Congress, with whom Sangma parted ways in 1999, described him as the tallest leader of the Northeast. Party President Sonia Gandhi said, In Sangma, the nation lost an important voice. Sharad Pawar, once the closest ally of Sangma, with whom he founded the Nationalist Congress Party, also expressed grief on Twitter. Country has lost uh, a great person was always protecting interests of parliamentary democracy and uh, a champion of Northeast cause. The Meghalaya government has announced a seven-day state mourning following Sangma's demise. Assembly Speaker Abuta Hermondol broke the news of his demise immediately after the governor's address on the first day of the budget session, shocking everyone present in the House. The Speaker also cut short the session and announced adjournment of the House till the day of his funeral to facilitate and ensure, as proposed by the Chief Minister. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And political leaders expressed a shock and grief over the sudden demise of P.A. Sangma. Let's listen in to some of the reactions. In the parliamentary history, he will be remembered forever as one of the best speakers. It's a big loss to the country. Big loss to the state of Meghalaya and to the northeastern people also. Sangma Sahab ko ek aisi me rajnitik hasti manta hoon, jise ki is desh ki sari political parties ke leaders ka samman prapta tha. Ye bahut badi shakti hui hai. Main har day ki gaharayon se apni fraddhanjali arpit karta hoon. It's a deeply, deeply saddening and shocking news for all of us because he was in the house till two days ago. He was a very popular figure. Whatever the political differences of opinion people may have had with him, everyone liked and admired him a great deal because he uh, used to, as that speaker said, he would laugh while conducting the House of Speaker. In 1996, he was a speaker. And in कुछ दिन पहले ही उनसे मुलाकात हुई थी महसूस ही नहीं होता था एक तो उनकी उम्र ही पता नहीं चलती थी लेकिन उनका जो निधन है मैं देश के तरफ से और पार्टी की तरफ से उन्हें 
अपने संपूर्ण हृदय से श्रद्धांजलि अर्पित करता हूँ सगमा जी एक बहुत ऐसी शख्सियत हैं कि जो उनके संपर्क में आया जिसको काम करने का मौका मिला उनके साथ वो कभी भी उनको भूल नहीं सकता संगमा जी मेरे बहुत अच्छे मित्र थे बहुत अच्छे इंसान थे और लोकसभा के स्पीकर के रूप में उन्होंने जो कार्य किया है वो हमारे देश की जनता और संसद कभी भूल नहीं सकती विशेष रूप से नॉर्थ ईस्ट के विकास के लिए सतत प्रयत्नशील रहते थे पी एस संगमा हमारे पार्टी के एक बहुत वरिष्ठ हमारे संस्थापक सदस्य थे और हमारे केवल पार्टी के ही नहीं लेकिन हमारे देश के एक बहुत बड़े नेता रहे देश के लोकसभा के स्पीकर रहे पूरे देश का हर बच्चा हर व्यक्ति बड़ा और छोटा उनको जानता था और बहुत उनको चाहता था NPA Sangma's death forced adjournment in Rajya Sabha yesterday. Leader of the House Arun Jaitley requested for an adjournment after the question hour, a request that found unanimous support. Till Tuesday, 11 o'clock on Tuesday, the 8th of March. In a rare gesture, Rajya Sabha was adjourned for the day soon after lunch as a mark of respect to former Lok Sabha Speaker P. A. Sangma. Soon after question hour, Leader of the House Arun Jaitley suggested to Chairman Mohammad Habib Ansari that since Sangma breathed his last in the national capital, members could go and pay their respects. I understand that a large number of members, and there's a broad consensus that because of the sad demise of Mr. Sangma, they will want to go to his uh, residence to pay tributes to him. So, would the chair consider uh, dispensing or postponing the after lunch sitting today? I think the leader of the house is very correct, not uh, that uh, the honourable members would like to participate in his last uh, uh, rites, but also uh, being uh, a cabinet minister for a long time, chief minister and the speaker of the other house, uh, and more so from the, maybe in the northeastern state, one of the tallest leaders uh, in the recent past, I think it will be appropriate uh, that uh, after one o'clock we uh, just it's call the day as uh, a mark of respect. This uh, request because he unfortunately passed away in Delhi and uh, therefore it is the body is there. It will be taken there but I think before the body is flown out of Delhi there, to pay respects there, there, there's a strong feeling. Sir. So what is so the suggestion? Today I would suggest sir the private members business be postponed for yes. another day and then and then we can adjourn before adjourning the house the chairman sought to know if it would be a one off case since sangma was a sitting member of lok sabha and not rajya sabha according to rules only that house is adjourned whose sitting member passes away i would like to inform the members those who are not aware of it and put it on record that our practice in this house has been to adjourn when a sitting member passes away. Correct. We, are we doing it as a very special gesture over and above our practice? Can we consider it as a one-time case, particularly because he passed away in Delhi, his body is likely to be taken to Meghalaya and uh, is a very important leader of the country and a number of members may want to visit his residence to pay last respect to him. Members of the House also requested that business for the post-lunch session be postponed to another day. Ravindra Shoran's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Now to some other news now. Well, President Pranam Mukherjee will inaugurate the National Conference on Women Legislators and Lawmakers at Delhi's Vigyan Bhavan today. The event will discuss several important issues. Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan will also address the gathering. Bangladesh's Speaker and CPA's President Shireen Chaudhary will chair the event. Social and economic development, good governance and legislation will be the key focus areas during the event. The conference is being organized by Lok Sabha Speaker Sumitra Mahajan on the International Women's Day. Around 300 women MPs and MLAs will participate in the event. Well, moving on now, well, leaders of uh, communist parties on Friday said that JNU Students Union President Kanhaiya Kumar will campaign for the left front in the five assembly poll-bound states. The CPI said that it is natural for Kanhaiya to campaign for the party since he is a left activist. Kumar is the leader of All India Students Federation, which is the students' wing of the CPI. 
With the West Bengal, Assam, Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry going to polls in the month of April and May, the demand for Kanahia to be part of the canvassing process has uh, had reportedly risen in the various parts of the country. Now, Kanahia Kumar, remember, was arrested on the charges of a sedition three weeks ago for allegedly raising India anti-India slogans. His arrest had triggered a massive uh, outcry in the country. He was granted interim bail for six months earlier this week on conditions that uh, he would cooperate in the ongoing investigation and uh, present himself uh, before the police as and when required. He is leader of our All India Students Federation. He is member of our party. That way he belongs to the communist movement. He belongs to the left movement. Now he is uh, one of the uh, outstanding uh, leaders of our uh, uh, youth students. And uh, he will participate uh, uh, in the campaign, in the elections. But how uh, the, his uh, program will be organized, that all will uh, be discussed and uh, decided by the party. In breakfast news, we'll take a very short break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. We have only exploited less than 1% of the, uh, you can say, the microorganisms that exist in the world. Technology is coming up to which we can culture these microorganisms. And I mean, like, they can be a source of, you know, novel uh, bioactive molecules. We are, we are living in basically post-antibiotic era right now. It becomes even more important to look for the newer molecules and newer scaffolds which can overcome the resistance. Watch your account with Dr. Bhaval Ali Shah, scientist at CSIR Triple IM, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 10.30 p.m. Splendid, grand and massive new Buddhist copper dome of the Rashtrapati Bhavan. It gets its influence from stupa at Sanchi. The dome is more than twice the height of the rest of the building. The reinforced concrete shell of the outer dome began to be formed during the beginning of 1929. The last stone of the dome was laid on April 6, 1929. Welcome back. Now, India has filed a complaint to the World Rail Organization against the U.S. over its decision to impose a high fee on temporary working visas, mostly involving the tech sector. Now, India's response came after the U.S. raised fee for temporary visas early in December. As a result, few Indians received unfair treatment compared to Americans in providing similar services in sectors like computers. Well, the U.S. was quick to respond, uh, as it said, uh, that its visa program was recently updated on a bipartisan basis uh, by the Congress and is fully compliant with the WTO obligations. Now, the WTO will make further information available in coming days. Now to some international news now. While casting shadow over the Syria peace talks, the opposition on Friday said that the government forces uh, have been mobilizing troops on several fronts. They expressed doubts if the UN broker talks would take place on 9th of March. The Syrian opposition's comments came as the rockets fired by Assad forces hit rebel held towns in Idlib province. However, major European powers expressed hope that at least a partial truce in Syria will create a momentum for peace talks. Meanwhile, taking advantage of the brief ceasefire, thousands of protesters across Syria took to the streets, holding rallies in years. They called for Syrian President Bashar al-Assad to step down. We 
أن الظروف حاليا غير مواتية لعقد مثل هذه المفاوضات كون المساعدات والمواد التي وردت في القرار 22 54 لم تطبق. We have a mechanism in place with the Russians, with other partners, to try to establish and work through any violations of the ceasefire. That is now up and running, uh, and uh, we will uh, hold to account uh, those who violate the ceasefire. Now, news from the U.S., where Republican candidate uh, Ben Carson has pulled out from his campaign uh, for the U.S. presidential nomination. Now, Carson, a retired neurosurgeon by profession, had been a frontrunner, but his campaign was stalled recently following a poor performance on foreign affairs and questions about his background story. He restrained from uh, saying uh, which of the remaining four candidates uh, that he plans to endorse in the race for the Republican nomination. Now, remember, four U.S. states, uh, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisiana and Maine, uh, go to polls on Saturday. You know, I did the math. I looked at the delegate counts, I looked at the states, I looked at the requirements, and I realized that it simply wasn't going to happen. And if that's the case, then I didn't want to interfere with the process. And a shocking story coming in. An Indian nun is among 16 people who were killed by gunmen in an attack in the Yemen port city of Aden. Well, the nun belonged to the missionaries of charity in Kolkata. An Indian nun from the Missionaries of Charity in Kolkata is among the four nuns killed in an attack in the Yemeni port of Aden. They were among the 16 people who were killed when gunmen attacked an old people's home. The four attackers told a guard they were on a visit to their mother, then stormed into the home and opened fire with rifles. The dead also include two Yemeni women staff, eight elderly residents and a guard. Earlier, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Vikas Varupt tweeted, clarifying that one Indian nurse, Cecilia Mintz, was killed. The clarification came as an earlier tweet by the External Affairs Minister had said that four Indian nurses were killed. Minister Sushma Swaraj asked all Indians living in danger zones to return home. She also said that nurses stayed back in Yemen, ignoring advisories by the government. News is really shocking. Uh, the details that I get is... Uh, that uh, it happened at 8.30 in the morning, local time, uh, while the sisters were serving breakfast. And there were five sisters. Uh, one of them is the superior, uh, who wasn't located by the gunman. But the other four were uh, serving at the same time, and uh, uh, they were shot. The gunmen fled after the attack. Their motive is not known yet. This is not the first time the missionaries of charity nuns were targeted. They also came under attack in Yemen in 1998 when gunmen killed three nuns in the Red Sea port city of Hodeida. nurses <laughs> Old home के लिए लोगों के लिए काम कर रही थी और अफसोस की बात यह कि इनको आतंकवादियों ने इनको भी नहीं छोड़ा. In the wake of escalation of violence, the Indian embassy in Yemen's capital Sana was closed last year, and all its functions were carried out from a camp office in Djibouti, a country neighboring Yemen and across the Red Sea. Al Qaeda and the IS have been stepping up attacks in Aden. Bureau report. Rajya Sabha TV. And some more international stories now in World Rap. Turkish police on Friday raided the offices of the opposition newspaper Zaman hours after a court ruling placed it under state control. Troops entered the newspaper building in Istanbul, firing tear gas at the protesters who had gathered outside. Zaman is closely linked to the Hizmet movement of influential US based cleric Fethullah Guler. Turkish officials said that uh, Hizmet is a terrorist group aiming to overthrow President uh, Recep Erdogan's government. European Commission President uh, Jean-Claude Juncker on uh, Friday said that Ukraine will not be able to join NATO or the European Union for at least another 20 years. His comments came in the context of an upcoming April referendum in the Netherlands on a free trade deal between the EU and Ukraine. 
The agreement does not qualify as the first step towards EU membership. Prominent members of Malaysia's ruling and opposition parties joined forces to call for Prime Minister Najib Razak to step down following corruption allegations against him. However, Najib Razak continues to hold the stand that allegations have been officially cleared and called it political vendetta. And on to cricket now, and Pakistan has finally won a consolation victory at the Asia Cup after defeating Sri Lanka by six wickets in their inconsequential final round robin league encounter. After much hue and cry over teams of performance, Pakistan came up with a strong batting performance with Umar Akmal slamming a quick fire 48 as Pakistan chased down a total of 151 in 19.2 overs while losing four wickets. Now batting first to Sri Lanka's Tilak Ratne Dilshan's unbeaten 75 helped Sri Lanka reach a score of 150. While chasing a challenging target of 151, Pakistan struggled at the start to losing Mohamed Hafiz in just 14 runs in the fourth over of the innings. But Pakistan then produced a collective uh, batting performance to win the match in 19.2 overs. Umar Akbal's uh, 48 of 37 balls and Shoaib Malik's 13 not out added 56 runs in 6.1 overs to take Pakistan home. Now, Akmal's innings uh, had four boundaries and two huge sixes. More sporting action now in Sports Beat. Fifteen-time world champion Pankaj Adwani continues a winning run without losing a single frame in the Asian Billiards Championship. Adwani defeated Thailand's Surya Subana Singh 4-0 in the fourth of five round-robin matches. The Indian sits at the top of his group with a total frame soft score of 16-0, having whitewashed all his opponents in four of his matches. However, India's challenge was ended at the German Open with the PV Sindhu losing her quarter-final match of 16-21, 18-21 to fourth seed the Chinese Wang Xian, while Parupali Kashyap suffered an injury at the midway through his match, dealing a fresh blow to his Olympic qualification hopes. World Championship silver medalist Jitu Rai announced his return to the competition circuit by winning the men's 50-meter free pistol gold in the shooting World Cup in Bangkok. Showing no signs of injury worries, Ajitu beat China's former world and Olympic champion Pang Wei to the yellow medal. The Indian shot 191.3 to Wei's 186.5. France's Davis Cup captain Yannick Noah scored a 2-0 lead over Canada in the World Group first-round match. Gail Monfils and Gil Simon both won in the straight sets on the day, while Japan's Aki Nishikori overcame a brave uh, Daniel Evans of Great Britain in the second uh, rubber of the Davis Cup encounter to bring the, the level, while the Kazakhstan Mikhail Kokokshin also leveled his country's tie with Serbia. That's all in this news bulletin, but news and updates continue on your channel. Keep watching Pajasabha TV.